Let's go through the 10 biggest companies in the world based on their market capitalization. Market capitalization or market cap measures what a company is worth on the market, but also the market's perception of its future prospects. So the companies about to follow aren't just successful now, but the public feels that they will continue being even more successful in the future. If you like this video, then please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. At number 10, we have Taiwan Semiconductor. Starting with a company you likely to have never have heard of before, Taiwan Semiconductor or TSMC is Taiwan's biggest company and they produce the chips that go in some of the biggest smartphones like the iPhone. Apple actually played a big role in their success. Before 2014, Apple's first A4 chip was created in Samsung Foundry. But when Samsung entered the mobile phone industry, something turned south and resulted in Apple suing Samsung for intellectual property theft. Soon after, Apple decided to get its chips exclusively from TSMC. And to this day, all of Apple's processors for its iPhones and iPads are exclusively made by TSMC. Number nine, Berkshire Hathaway. You might have heard of Berkshire Hathaway thanks to Warren Buffett, its CEO, or thanks to its high stock prices. The company owns a diverse range of businesses, including retail, railroads, confectionery, and even manufacturers of vacuum cleaners. Berkshire Hathaway started off as a textile manufacturing company in 1839. In 1962, Warren Buffett began buying stock in it after noticing a pattern in their price direction. Eventually, Buffett acknowledged that the textile business is on its way down and slowly started venturing into the insurance industry and other investments and now has a stock price in excess of $350,000. Number 8. Tencent Tencent is a Chinese multinational company and it's the world's largest video gaming company. It has dozens of subsidiaries including social networks, payment systems, media, entertainment, property, e-commerce and many, many more. Since the company went public in 2004, its stock has increased by 11,000%. Its most popular app has to be WeChat with 1 billion users. The app can be considered the Chinese equivalent of Facebook, Messenger, Amazon, Tinder, Venmo and Candy Crush. Despite it being a Chinese company, Tencent is actually registered in the Cayman Islands. Cayman Islands in the Caribbean only have 60,000 residents, but over 100,000 companies are registered there for no other reason than it's a tax haven. So all these companies don't have to pay corporation tax. Given 10 cents revenue, we can only imagine how much the company is saving. Number seven, we have Facebook. Chances are you are one of the 2.8 billion people who have a Facebook account. Facebook started in 2004 as a platform only used by Harvard students, thus the name Facebook, which is what the directories given to American university students were called. Only two years later, Facebook was opened up to the public and anyone claiming to be over 13 years old could register. The Facebook empire now owns other social media and messaging platforms like Instagram, WhatsApp, and Messenger, which makes it the most popular social network. Fun fact, Mark Zuckerberg's original website in 2003 was called FaceMash and was putting up university student pictures side by side for people to vote who was the hottest. Despite it being quite popular, Zuckerberg was charged with copyright and privacy violation charges that were later dropped so he could go on and create Facebook. Number six, Alibaba. Alibaba is a Chinese multinational company specializing in e-commerce and retail. You could say it is similar to Amazon, but it doesn't just provide business to consumer sales, but also business to business. So businesses around the world can get their stocks delivered through them. In 2014, Alibaba's initial public offering raised $25 billion, given the company a market value of $231 billion and was by far then the biggest IPO in the world. It was named the 31st largest company in the world on the Forbes Global 2020 list. And it was the second Asian company to break the $500 billion valuation mark after its competitor, Tencent. One of the founders, Jack Ma, said he picked the name after the character Alibaba in the Middle Eastern folktale, 1001 Nights, who was a kind and smart business person that helped the village. Bonus points for the name being widely known, easy to spell and associated with the phrase open sesame. Jack Ma described his company as a company that opened sesame for small to medium businesses. And number five, we have Alphabet. Maybe the name doesn't sound familiar, but this is the parent company of Google. 
Alphabet was created in 2015 to restructure and narrow Google's scope by moving subsidiaries from Google to Alphabet. Apparently, they got this idea from Warren Buffett and how he structured Berkshire Hathaway. Its subsidiaries include DeepMind, a British artificial intelligence company, and Waymo. Waymo is an autonomous driving technology development company that launched self-driving taxis in Phoenix. These taxis operate either with a driver behind the wheel in case human intervention is needed, or sometimes without a driver at all. The co-founders of Google remained as controlling shareholders of the company when Alphabet was founded. And in fact, in 2019, the CEO of Alphabet stepped down and one of the CEOs of Google, Sundar Pichai, took over. At number four, we have Microsoft. Microsoft is best known for its Windows operating system and its former CEO, Bill Gates. Him and Paul Allen were co-founders of the company and were childhood friends and they were determined to create a successful software company. The company was founded in 1975 and it really shot up six years later when Microsoft won a contract with IBM. They agreed to bundle Microsoft's operating system with IBM computers. And it is said that when Bill Gates sold the idea to IBM, he didn't actually have Windows ready. And when he won the contract, he had to go back and finalize it. The company now does a lot more and sells everything electronics related, but also its flagship hardware product, the Xbox video games console. Amazon comes in at number three. Amazon was one of the companies that definitely benefited after the pandemic, although it had been a top performer in the industry for years. Many people forgot that Amazon started by only selling books. But soon after, the CEO Jeff Bezos realized that diversifying his inventory would make Amazon the world's largest online marketplace. The company now sells everything you can imagine, from jewelry to furniture, and has even gone into movies, music, audiobook subscriptions, and even food deliveries. It is obvious that as years go by, the company will keep adding to their products and services with an anticipated service being Amazon Prime Air. This means that customers will be able to have deliveries to their door within 30 minutes by drone. Currently, there's no official launch date as it was originally meant to be launched in 2019. Jeff Bezos was actually the richest man in the world up until recently, but was overtaken by Elon Musk. However, second richest man in the world doesn't sound so bad. At number two, we have Saudi Aramco. Saudi Aramco is a petroleum and natural gas company from Saudi Arabia. The company has both the world's second largest proven crude oil reserves and the largest daily oil production. They're clearly dominating this sector, but they're not stopping there. A couple of days ago, it was announced that they're acquiring 70% of another big petroleum company called Sabic, which would make their value revenue shoot up by 2025. Unfortunately, as well as they seem to be doing in their own sector, this company is one of the most damaging public companies to the environment. However, they have confirmed they're taking steps to minimize their environmental impact. The number one company with the world's highest market cap is Apple. Apple doesn't need much introduction. It was the first company to reach $1 trillion in market cap in 2018. Most people know that the company was founded by Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, but not everyone knows that there was a third person called Ronald Wayne, who decided to sell his stake in the company within the first 12 days. Apple's current mission statement from its CEO, Tim Cook, is to bring the best user experience to its customers through its innovative hardware, software, and services. The company's first product was a personal computer called Apple One, but as we all know, the company is now selling a variety of hardware products that include smartphones, tablets, computers, watches, earphones, and many, many more. How long can Apple keep their number one place? Do you think that they will soon slow down and fall behind when it comes to innovation? Let us know in the comments below.